Update from over at Bridgestone Arena. The Predators now leading the Coyotes 2-1. to one. Ryan Ellis with a goal here in the second period from Derek Roy. Ellis is having a good night tonight. He also assisted on Mike Ribeiro's goal in the first period. So goal and assist so far for Ellis. Ribeiro, of course, facing his old team, Arizona, tonight and getting a goal early on. Preds up 2-1, to one, trying to make it six games to start the season without a regulation loss there off to a terrific start under new coach Peter Laviolette. We can talk about the Preds, more talk about the Titans, college football, whatever you want. 737-7767 is the number. We got lines open for you. We also have Tiffany on the phone. Tiffany, good evening. Hey, Sue. Look, you already know I want to talk about my friends. Nice. <laughs> In the Nashville Predators, I took it on them. I am so proud of them. And um, Peter loves me. Man. He's like a breath of fresh air. He got it going on. I mean, it's like um, that's how it's supposed to be. When a team get a new coach, the whole game scheme is supposed to change. And that's how it is with the friends. It's like you can tell it's just a totally different style in the way they play. And um, tonight they play the Arizona Coyotes and my baby Mark Eric. But, um, man, look, I know everybody is depressed about the Titans, but they need to check out our hockey team because they are winning games like crazy, okay? <laughs> Yep. Thank you. You got it. So far, they have been. And I think you're right about the breath of fresh air, too. And nothing against Barry Trotz, who, by the way, has one of the other two unbeaten and regulation teams in the National Hockey League right now in Washington. So that guy can coach a little bit as well. But when you do it for 15 years in the same spot, sometimes the message just gets a little stagnant. And I think this was a case where the Preds needed a change and Barry Trotz needed a change. And so far, it's worked out well for both. But you look at what the Preds are doing with Peter Laviolette. They are pushing forward. They are attacking. They're creating chances. They're punching those chances in. They're scoring more goals. They're more exciting to watch right now because of the way that they are playing. It's not the defensive style that they were so good at for so long. It's now more of an attacking, in-your-face, forechecking, and scoring style. And that's exciting. It's been exciting to watch for through the first couple weeks of the season. Obviously, the results are paying off, and it's much needed around here. When you look around, and the Titans are struggling, and Vanderbilt's struggling, and Tennessee is struggling in SEC play, fans around here are thirsty for a winner. And so far, the Preds, in very short time, have become that winner so far this year. And I know it's still football season. A lot of people are focused on that. But if they continue this and to continue to play well, I think this town is going to get very excited about Preds hockey before this season is over. Let's go to Danny. Danny, what's up? You're on Sportsline. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. You got it. Um, you know, when, 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 when we as Titans fans get, get down on the Titans, you know, I always ask certain questions. And one of the questions is, how do you build a football team? Well, you build a football team from the front offense down. Now, any decision that has been made that has been detrimental to the team has happened over the last, let's say, six years. When you have instability, you look at the fact that after Jeff Fisher had left, you got, you've had two coaches. You've had different systems. Nobody's had a chance to really adjust and have a system set in place. Now, Munchuck had a chance, but he was building the team. We didn't have patience with that. Now we have a situation with Mr. Wisenheim, who is a proven coach, who is a proven commodity. Now, I think that as Titan fans, we have to realize something. we got new players. Mr. Adams died, I think, last year. Yep. you got pretty much a new front office and a new coach. Everything about this team is new. This is this is a totally new experience, but I can see with what they've done with the offensive line, they have a foundation. Jake Locker, as much as I like the guy, I like the kid. It was not what the Titans needed, and, you know. But we can't put it all on Jake. Jake has had a, a very rough career, but I think in the wings, the Titans have what they're going to need going forward. Just be patient. Hey, we may suffer through another year 
of, of, of a losing season. But I can guarantee you, if we hang on in there, we are going to be very proud of that product that we're going to see on the field. It's just the thing of realizing this is brand new. Thanks for taking my call. You got it, Danny. Thanks for, listen, or thanks for watching and calling in. I think the frustrating thing for fans is that in the NFL, you see teams turn it around overnight. You see what Andy Reid and Alex Smith did last year in Kansas City. You see what the Colts did a couple years ago with Andrew Luck adding to the picture. The frustrating thing for the Titans is you look at that roster and you feel like there's good players there. You feel like there's guys that can be a part of a good NFL team. But for whatever reason, they can't get themselves over the hump. And I think a big part of it is that quarterback situation. We talk about it a lot, but it's a, it's a quarterback-driven league. And the teams with the quarterbacks that are playing at a high level, specifically the ones with the elite quarterbacks that do it every year, those are the teams that are in the playoffs. And the Titans have not had elite quarterback play for a long, long time. And they're in danger now of having back-to-back first-round draft picks quarterbacks that are bust. Vince Young was one. Now Jake Locker's dangerously close to having that label placed on him. It's hard to survive as a franchise with that, and I think that has a lot of people frustrated because say you say that Jake Locker's not the guy. You decide to move on after this season. What makes you think that this Titans front office and I know it's changed a little bit over the course of the eight years from Vince Young to now but what makes you think that this franchise is going to go into that draft next spring and draft a quarterback in the first round or second round or wherever that's going to change it all that will be better than the last two the history doesn't bear it out that that's what's going to happen And I think that's what's so frustrating. You feel like they're close and they just need a piece or two or before the season, they just needed a new coach. Well, it's the same results. At some point, they've got to change the history. On the field, in the draft, wherever, whenever. It's got to happen at some point. And it's got to happen before fans are going to jump back on board. Let's go to Timothy. Timothy, good evening. How you doing? You doing well? My my question is, why don't the Titans just go ahead and change the whole format of the team? Like change uniforms, make better uniforms, change the stadium around, make a better stadium, and you know just just try to make it look more NFL type instead of looking like the old Titans. You know this Titan team we got, they are young, they are still learning, and I see winning in them. Just like the first guy and the second guy talked about, the stars from the front office down. We did that. We got a good coach. I, I like Wiz Hunt. I love him. And I would like to see him win more games. But we also got to start at the quarterback, which I like Jay. But Whitehurst is not the answer. Control the game. You know how to manage the game. But the, the season is going like it is right now. We need to go ahead and put Mettenberger in and see what he's going to be for our future next year. Or do we got to go into the draft and get a quarterback? Everything else about the Titans is good. Defense is getting together. I love how the defense is playing. Offense is still going to need some more help. Avitri giving up too many sacks. We need more help at the guard. Womack is a good player. But right at that guard position, we need more help. We're paying that boy a ton of money. Levitra, we need another strong guard. Now, the rest of the front line is doing that part. But that's just my question on the Titans. I'll hang up from here. Yeah, Timothy, we appreciate it. I think, I think you're right. I think the defense is playing better. I think the mistake that the Titans made in constructing this team is that they believe that the the parts around the quarterback offensively could lift the quarterback position up. You know, the the sum of the whole 
would be greater than just what the quarterback could produce. A lot of other teams in the NFL get the quarterback first, or, or the teams that are having success have the elite quarterback, and then they put pieces around him. I think the thought here was Jake Locker's good, but we can put a bunch of good spot people around him, and that will make him great. That will make him a playoff-type quarterback, whoever we fill in there. And you got some issues in that Jake Locker hasn't been out there enough to even really get a feel for it. But two, that just hasn't happened. You got to have a quarterback that commands that huddle. You have to have a quarterback that can make quick decisions, can make the throws, and most importantly in this case, can be out there on the field. Jake Locker has missed 17 of the last 39 games. 17 of 39. Think about that for a second. Very hard to win when your franchise quarterback's missing basically half of the games. Got to take a break. We'll come back. More of your phone calls right after this. The number 737-7767. We got open lines for you. Stay with us. You're watching Sports Line on News Channel 5 Plus.